Alright, I am back with another video, and today we are doing a really interesting one. I have dubbed this video, or build, or whatever you want to call it, The Legion. Because, I mean... Hold on, if I just zoom out the camera, fucking look at it. <laughs> Basically, the whole idea of this build was to create an undead demon evil army now i've done summoner builds in the past i've done the evil dead build which focused on the necromancer wizard i've done uh you know my uh my druid builds that focus on summoning that being mere lucky's guardians so i wanted to kind of take this concept to the next level i wanted to provide a simple full party build that anybody could use that uses different classes for each build that can create a massive army for you to fight with and I've kind of gone with the kind of evil tone so if you wanted to do like a dark urge run with this kind of setup you absolutely could and you're gonna have a ton of fun. Now again because this is a full party build it would take a very long time to do a deep dive into each build which is why I've kept it really simple. Each of these builds is a single class build. Now obviously there is room for optimization with multi-classing but for the sake of simplicity and for people who maybe wanted to pick up this kind of playstyle and aren't too familiar with build making in depth I wanted to make something again that is quite simple easy to understand and that can be used effectively. So what I will do is I will quickly go over each class and kind of go over why I made the choices that I did and then after that we'll get into the summons as well just so you know exactly what you're working with. So let's get into the build. So here I have the main character which is a dark urge and I decided to keep the default dark urge look because I think it actually really works if you wanted to make this your kind of proper dark urge run. Uh, I feel like keeping the default look worked really nicely, and look at this guy, he looks badass as hell. So he is an Oathbreaker Paladin. Uh, pure Oathbreaker Paladin, no deviations here, although like I say, if there are multi-classing things you want to do here, you absolutely could. Uh, but the reason I went with uh, Paladin for this build is because I've kind of got a few things. We've got the General, we've got like the kind of undead master of like infection, we've got the necromancy wizard and a knowledge domain cleric. And I wanted like a leader character, I wanted someone to be the face of the party, to act like a general and command their allies in battle. We have made a small army, so I want someone to lead it. And having a charisma based warrior made a ton of sense, especially when Oathbreaker is going to give us a ton of benefits. Uh, we are going to get things like the Aura of Courage, meaning this Paladin and any nearby allies cannot be frightened. We also get Aura of Hate, and this is the big one. The Paladin and any nearby fiends, and undead, so basically 90% of our summons, uh, deal an additional uh, 4 slashing damage, so it's equal to your Charisma modifier, to damage dealt with melee weapons. So it means that you, yourself, and your allies are going to get a small buff with your um, you know, Charisma, and any summoned entities that are around you that are fiends or undead are also going to get a buff with weapon attacks, which is nice. We're also going to get Aura of Protection, and uh, basically any us and any nearby allies are going to get a bonus on saving throws, which is super good. Uh, we have Warding Bond cast on us by the Cleric here, just because it's going to give us a plus one to our armor class, make us resistant to everything, and give us a buff to our saving throws. Uh, yes, it means our Cleric will take damage, but our Cleric is, is a healer, so that works out just fine, meaning that as we can be in the front line of the battlefield, leading our troops and being incredibly tanky. Uh, we're also under the effect of... Uh, a spell called uh, Hero's Feast, but we'll get to that later, and Aid as well. So, with that, you're going to have a strong uh, frontline fighter who is going to be able to basically use their abilities to kind of uh, tank, be a frontline fighter, and buff the our summons and our other party members. There also are a few specific abilities from the Oathbreaker Paladin that I'd like to go over that are down here. First off, we have Spiteful Suffering, allowing us to mark a target, and they take additional necrotic damage, and attack rolls against them have advantage, which is pretty good. Control Undead, use your channel of charge to subjugate an undead to follow your every command until you until your next long rest. Basically, this is going to get you another summon if you just so happen to run into an undead enemy, which in this game will actually happen quite frequently, so it will add to the army. 
Like I said, we've got our auras, we've also got our Divine Smite allowing us to do big chunks of damage, but we also can use our own Animate Dead spell to get an extra undead. We get this at level 9, which is pretty decent. And there's also, and there's other things like Dreadful Aspect allowing you to frighten your enemies, uh, you know, deal necrotic damage with inflict wounds. There's a ton of stuff that's on theme, Crusader's Mantle allowing your allies' weapon attacks to deal more damage. And you can also get things like Revivify to revive your allies and such and kind of be a team leader. This, this uh, general build is mainly just for uh, going in, being a strong melee fighter, and being able to buff our summons. That's the main crux of it, and again, to be the face of the party, allowing you to pass those charisma checks with ease, because this is a charisma caster. Uh, none of these builds have any specific feats either, again, keeping it simple, so the only thing you need to worry about is ability score improvements, and I would use the Potion of Everlasting Vigor on this build to bump this up to a 20, but you have solid stats overall. Uh, let's move on to the next build, the Circle of Spores Druid. We've gone with a Spores Druid because of a few things. One, Druids get a ton of summoning abilities. If I actually swap over to him, we can see them. We get things like Conjure Elemental, Conjure Minor Elemental, Conjure Woodland Being, which can itself make another summon, Animate Dead, which is separate from Fungal Infestation, allowing us to create multiple undead zombies that will fight for us, and the Fungal and Undead un Zombie that you can get can also create more zombies, although those are temporary. But we can get even more summoning spells like Grasping Vine and Flaming Sphere, although those do require concentration. But this build is going and to... And we also have things like Dominate Beast, which could allow us to subjugate animals to fight for us as well, adding more to the pile. So yeah, we have a ton, and I mean a ton of summoning options here, with the ability to create more as the fight goes on with our spores. We're also going to be a tanky melee fighter, gaining additional temporary HP and having our attacks deal an extra 1d6 necrotic damage. And we can also use our reaction to cast Hail, Hail, Halo of Spores to deal even more necrotic damage. So you're going to be a super powerful frontline fighter. I would say this is kind of like your right-hand man, your main soldier to the general, who is also going to be doing a lot of summoning. They they also are going to be getting things like uh, yeah I think I don't think there's much else to actually talk about with this one until we get to the equipment so yeah the main idea is this is going to be one of your main summoners uh, we have our wisdom at max because our spell it's our spell casting modifier and we are going to be using shillelagh to bump that up uh, to bump up our weapon attacks with our wisdom modifier so you know basically the whole idea is even more summons speaking of summons let's look at the necromancy wizard this is a level twelve wizard which is going to get even more summoning spells, including Create Undead, to create a big, big, big damage, uh, big tanky, big everything kind of undead, much, much more much more powerful than the regular anime undead, and is definitely worth having around. Uh, Contra Elemental again, to give us another Contra Elemental summon. Contra Minor Elemental, to give us even more summons there. Uh, animate Dead as well, and because we are a Necromancy Wizard, we can create two undead at once with this spell, which is awesome. And there isn't any other really, like, summoning spells here, but we do get a ton of awesome utility spells like Long Strider, which can be used on our summons and our allies, Featherfall, which works for everybody as well, uh, and then we just get to keep ourselves alive and deal tons of damage with things like Cloud Kill, Fireball, and move around with things like Misty Step, and we can even use Globe of Invulnerability to keep our Cleric safe, for example. So, let's get into that next. We also have a Knowledge Domain Cleric. Now, this may seem like a bit of an odd choice, but hear me out. I wanted a healer, somebody who can use Mass Healing Word and other wide healing spells to be able to uh, keep up the uh, HP of both our allies and our summons, and a Cleric obviously works perfectly for that. But a Knowledge Domain Cleric gets an additional bit of utility that we would like for this build that we don't normally see. We do get summoning spells like Animate Dead, Spiritual Weapon, and Guardian of Faith as well in addition to Create Undead as well at max level, and we can also grab Planar Ally too, but we're actually going to be getting that from a weapon as well, as you can see here. Uh, but the main thing here we're going to be getting here is Hero's Feast. You and everyone around you can't be poisoned, diseased, or frightened. Your HP increases and you make wisdom saves with advantage. This counts for everyone, every summon, every party member, yourself, everyone gets this buff. In addition to the buff you can grant with aid, if you cast this with a 5th level spell slot after using Hero's Feast, you can stack up the HP benefits for everyone and their summons, allowing you to go absolutely crazy and buff up the summons with massive amounts of HP so they don't just die in a couple of hits, you actually have soldiers that will stay on the battlefield. But in addition to this, us being a Knowledge Cleric is going to give us some unique abilities, including Dominate 
person, which is going to force an enemy to fight alongside us. That is another person on the team, and it felt perfect in kind of an evil army playthrough to be able to take your enemies and make them fight for you. We can also grab things like Insect Plague as well to be able to summon insects that are going to give our enemies a ton of trouble. And also we can buff ourselves with things like Spirit Guardians to run around the battlefield and just do tons of damage anyway. So yeah, that is kind of the general setup as far as the levels go. Essentially, you're going to get a huge amount of summons across the board, all of different varieties, as well as the ability to heal all of those summons and keep them up and lead them and make them do extra damage. Basically, this whole team has a ton of synergy that is going to make you feel like a true leader of an army. But let's get into the equipment and while it's not as important individually like what weapons and equipment you pick as the main thing is just being able to summon we might as well go over some key highlights that each build is kind of based around so the general uh none of his equipment is really mandatory but if you wanted to get create undead on him the crypt lord ring is a great option this is going to give you another summon and i felt like after death do us parts to allow him to when he's downed rise once more with half his hit points but go berserk it felt totally on theme and works super nice here i've also gone with reaper's embrace just because it's a fun awesome looking on theme armor it's grabbed straight from Kefric form, you're going to have a lot of fun with this one, and it's going to give you Howl of the Dead, which numbs enemies and felt quite on theme. We're also going to be getting the, Hawk of the Horns of the Berserker to give us an extra two necrotic damage, and it just looks awesome. I mean, look at this build. This looks sick. Uh, the actual weapons themselves don't matter, although I would recommend a Darkfire Shortbow to give you those couple of resistances and the ability to cast haste to make you even more powerful. And I've gone for the Sethan weapon here, because it gives you the ability to cast a level 6 Spiritual Great Axe, which will be another summon that you can use. However, it's totally not necessary. Go with anything you like here up until that point. And as for the other stuff, I've just gone with the Dark Justicia Gauntlets to give us a an extra necrotic buff on our attacks, the Cloak of Protection for a little more AC, and the Boots of Persistence to give us freedom of movement and Long Strider. But again, feel free to swap these around as you see fit. It's not set in stone. I've also gone with the Spectator's Eyes for an extra necrotic damage attack and the ability to, encrypt, to inflict fear, but it's, again, not necessary. Overall, with this equipment setup, you're going to have a very imposing-looking character who is going to be able to tank a ton of damage thanks to Reaper's Embrace, Embrace's natural defenses, and also be able to manipulate the battlefield in various different ways and just be a tanky frontline fighter, as I said. For the Spores Druid, we have gone with um, a kind of interesting combo here. I've gone for dual wielding as far as the weapons are concerned. Uh, if I remember how to do the thingy, but it's okay. Uh, I've gone with the Torch of Revocation for our main weapon. Uh, this is just going to give us a big bump to our damage with Necrotic and Fire damage. Uh, and also I've got the Club of Hill Giant Strength in the offhand, which is just going to increase our strength to 19. And also since we can do it, uh, since we're going to get two weapon fighting, thanks to our Gloves of the Balanced Hands, we might as well throw dual crossbows on this build so we are an effective ranged fighter as well. As for the headpiece, we've got the Circle of Bones. Allied undead within 6 meters are resistant to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. And you can cast Animate Dead with this, but we already get that as a class feature. But it doesn't matter. But since this is another frontline fighter character, being able to, with uh, magic and casting, being able to jump straight into the battlefield and have all of your undead get a massive defense buff is super, super good. I've gone for the Flesh Melter Cloak just for that extra bit of acid damage. And we've got Armor of the Spore Keeper. The wearer gains a plus one bonus to spell safety C, and when dealing necrotic damage, they deal an additional one. But you also get to, while under the effect of your symbiotic entity, create. Um, if I click it up, we can get some spores, including haste spores as a bonus action you can eject a cloud of white spores that haste any creature that enters the cloud meaning that any of our allies and summons can get a quick haste boost as long as they quickly walk into the haste spores as they start their turn meaning that you can go for one big nova round of damage with every single one of your summons which could be super strong as I said before, we've gone with the Gloves of the Balanced Hands to give us uh, two weapon fighting without needing to take a dip into Fighter, but you absolutely could if you wanted to. But I also really wanted that extra feat, so I decided to just go with the Gloves instead, especially since all of our good kind of summoning equipment is on our other stuff, is on our other characters anyway. This basically just means that our dual crossbow and dual club strategy is going to work, giving us that extra bit of damage to our offhand attacks. 
And finally, the boots for speed, just to give us a bonus action dash if we feel we so need it. And as for the ring setup, I've gone for the kind of... Um, general uh, poison setup broodmother's revenge whenever the wearer is healed their we the weapon becomes coated in magic and deals an additional 1d4 poison damage uh it says 1d6 on the tooltip but it is incorrect it is 1d4 they still haven't fixed this yet and since we're wearing the ring of generation which it ring of regeneration my apologies that is going to allow us to heal 1d4 hit points every turn our weapons are constantly going to be buffed to poison giving them even more damage and i've also gone for crusher's ring i know it says emerald ring but it's just the mod being weird it is crusher's as ring in functionality that is just going to give us a bump to our movement speed allowing us to move around the battlefield very very easily next up we are to the necromancer and the most important thing here is the staff of cherished necromancy creatures have disadvantage on saving throws against your necromancy spells which is awesome and when the wielder kills a hostile creature with a spell they greedily absorb its energy and gain life essence until their next long rest Life Essence means that your next Necromancy spell is cast without using a spell slot, allowing you to infinitely cycle through your summons and Necromancy spells. I believe the only Necromancy spells I actually have here... I mean, I did have Ray of Sickness. I don't know where that's gone, but yeah, make sure you get Ray of Sickness on this build. Uh, but also we have things like Blight as well, and Bone Chill, so basically you can infinitely toggle through your, uh, your Conjuring Undead spells, like Animate Dead and such like that and there should be crate undead as well i think my prepared spells got messed up here but you can look at the spell list just oh no because this isn't <laughs> this isn't the necromancer there we go that makes sense i forgot to switch characters so yeah you can cycle through things like uh ray of sickness um you know cloud kill you can also get blight on this character as well uh bone chill and all of your necromancy spells like crate undead and such and cycle through them with infinite uh spell slots which is good as you can see these are the ones that are affected at the moment uh, as for our equipment as well, we've gone with the Hat of Fire Acuity. We have things. We can get things like Fireball and Scorching Ray. So we might as well up our uh, spells. Our We might as well get a plus one bonus to attack rolls and difficulty class per turn remaining whenever we deal fire damage. So we might as well just get that little bit of a buff to our spell attacks uh, basically for free. We also have the Infernal Robe, giving us a plus one to our armor class, resistance to fire damage, and the ability to cast Fire Shield, meaning that any allies that um, would attack us uh, would take an extra 2d8 fire damage, which is good. Uh, also, we're going to be getting the Abyss Beckoners. The wearer's summoned creatures have resistance to all damage except psychic damage, meaning that your summoned undead are going to be super, super powerful. But it comes with the caveat that at the start of the summoned creature's turn, it must succeed a wisdom saving throw or be driven mad. Basically, it's a risk reward type system, but you can toggle this ability off at any time. So if you want to make sure, so it depends on if you want them to be tanky or if you want them to be reliable, and you can kind of swap between them whenever you like. And finally, the Disintegrating Nightwalkers, just so we can misty step around the arena, and since because we are a squishy wizard, we want to make sure we're in a good position to not be hit and can just uh, blast people at range, so getting that extra use of misty step is quite nice. As for our accessories, we have the Spell Crux Amulet to give us spell slot restoration to allow us to use our big high level spells way, on, way more often. Ring of Arcane Synergy, when you deal damage with a cantrip, you gain Arcane Synergy for two turns. Basically, if an enemy does get close to us and we have this up, we can just give them a whack with our stick. And finally, the Keepsake Ring, allowing us to cast Dominate Beast, which will allow us to bring an animal to our side for a little while, again, adding to the army. And since we can have a shield on this build, I've just gone with um, Kefric Shield because it looks evil enough and will give us a plus two bonus to our AC. It's not, it's nothing crazy, but it'll be, it's just nice to have. And finally, our Knowledge Domain Cleric has a is again focused mainly on healing so i've gone for some healing based equipment namely wapira's crown when healing another the wearer themselves regains 1d6 hit points just a better way of keeping us alive especially when we're going to be giving warding bond to our general as for, and that is going to be uh, combined with the whispering promise whenever you heal the creature it gains a 1d4 bonus to attack rolls and saving throws for two turns if you use mass healing word Every single one of these summons and allies in range are going to get this bless buff, which is super strong. And this is also going to be combined with the Ring of Salving, just to give it that extra little bit of healing to everyone you heal. Just get an additional two points whenever you heal a creature. Uh, as for our amulet, we're going with the Amulet of the Devout. You gain a plus two bonus to spell save DC, and you gain an additional use of your channel divinity uh, once every long rest. So we have a total of three channel divinity, if I just scoot on over here, as you can see. So that means we can be a bit of a skill monkey for the party as well with our astral knowledge feature. As for our cloak, I've gone with the Nymph Cloak to give us an extra use of Dominate Person that isn't going to take up a spell slot. 
We also have the Dark Justicia Half Plate, which will allow us to uh, cast Shield of Faith and will make Shield of Faith reduce all damage, uh, incoming damage by two, and reflect damage received back at the attacker who takes one to four necrotic damage. None of that really matters, but what does matter is advantage on constitution saving throw checks, meaning that our concentration spells are going to be able to stay up a lot longer. I have also gone with the Hell Riders Pride. Whenever you heal another creature, it gains resistance against bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage dealt by weapon attacks, meaning that when we use that big mass healing word, every single one of, of our allies are going to get resistance to weapon attacks, which is awesome. And then finally, the Dark Justicia Boots, which is going to give us shadow teleportation, allowing us to teleport between um, obscured spots, meaning that we can get around and be harder to hit. And our main weapon is the Infernal Rapier. We gain a plus one bonus to spell save DC. And instead of using our Dexterity Modifier, the Affected Entity adds its spell casting ability modifier to attack rolls. That means we get to focus pretty much purely on leveling up Wisdom, which is awesome. It is also going to give us the ability to use Planar Ally Cambion, giving us another really powerful summon to add to the fight. Uh, and basically we'll summon a powerful devil that can do a that can I can't speak that can inflict um, various status effects and just deal a ton of damage now I did check this version of the spell does not stack with the regular planar ally that you can get at high levels of cleric you will so you will if you want to do something other than a cambion you can pick up that spell but I'd rather have that spell slot open for something else so the infernal rapier works perfectly here I've also gone for the Shield of the De of Devotion to give us an extra level 1 spell slot, and the ability to cast aid on ourselves, but it's not really a big deal. We basically just wanted it for the extra AC. And the bow, I just quickly slapped this on. It's gone to Mail, which will give you the ability to cast a shorter version of Haste, and it's just a powerful ranged attack, but this isn't really necessary. I just quickly threw it on. So with that, as you can see... Oh, the General's in there somewhere. Come on, over here. As you can see, we are going to have a ton of uh, utility with these builds, the ability to summon tons of allies, as you can see here, and the ability to buff them up really with a lots of health and tankiness and resistances so they stay alive, and then also be really effective fighters and supports uh, with and get really effective uh, uh, combat and support options with our actual party members themselves. Uh, this was done all with hirelings. I did not use the multiplayer kind of exploit to be able to get multiple uh, avatar characters. This is done with hirelings, so this can be done on console. Just uh, <laughs> watch your frame rate. Um, so with that, what uh, is there left to talk about? Well, how about the actual summons themselves? What are each summon is actually going to be able to do for us? And you're going to have a ton of options for your summons. So let's go over what every single summon does. First up, we have the Mummy, which is created through the Create Undead spell. It has, a, it has a ton of HP. I mean, this is under the effect of Heroes Feast and Aid, but it still is getting a ton of HP by default. Uh, it has Rotting Fist, which is going to deal a ton of necrotic damage and can possibly inflict Mummy Rot, which means that the enemy's hit points is reduced by 8 and cannot be healed, which is a huge debuff. We also gain Dreadful Glare, allowing you to frighten your your target and once they are frightened you can use multi-attack a multiple attacks at a target that is frightened each one deals 5 to 15 slash slashing damage and 3 to 18 necrotic damage so you can frighten your enemy which is going to debilitate them anyway preventing them from uh pre preventing them from moving and then absolutely beating them down it is extremely powerful and with this setup we are going to have one uh two three of these guys so it's pretty strong i've also gone for an uh an undead skeleton here with animate dead on the general which means you're going to get uh the ability to use ranged attacks which are going to deal an extra chunk of necrotic damage so we just get a nice ranged archer character that can hand back and deal that bit of extra damage each turn as for our summons from the spores druid i've gone i've decided to show off the earth myrmidon which is going to have a few interesting abilities, such as Grounded Thunder Strike, dealing a ton of thunder damage and possibly knocking an enemy prone. Sludgy Sling, allowing them to hurl a heavy amount, a heavy dollop, dollop of sludge, dealing bludgeoning damage. They can teleport with something akin to Misty Snap. They can burrow underground, allowing them to come back up through the earth and deal bludgeoning damage. And also use Muck to Metal to increase their armor class by two, but reduces their movement speed. Overall, this is a really powerful summon, and it's just one of the very many you can go with. There's, like, fire elementals, earth elementals, like, all sorts you can do. So pick pick and choose with this one, but I wanted to just show off this one, because I think it's personally my favorite. I've also gone for an 
uh, Conjured Elemental Azor, which is, can, is basically just a decent all-around fighter, and can use like, regular attacks, Searing Smite, and can also overheat, causing enemies to start burning fiercely, which means that they take 1d10 fire damage per turn. Uh, basically just another decent combatant. Uh, what else do we have here? We also have the Dryad, which can use things like Entangle, Spike Growth, uh, Shillelagh, so it's kind of, and also heal themselves with Goodberry, so it's just an overall uh, kind of like control character, being able to keep enemies in place to prevent them from moving. Just to be careful that if you use something like Spike Growth, your army still has to get through that patch, so maybe use this one sparingly, but if things like Entangle and Shillelagh will do just well, just giving you another frontline fighter. We also have there the Dryad summon the Wood Woad, which is just another big bo big tanky body that can use Entangle and a main hand attack. Again, it's just another body to attack and deal damage. Nothing too crazy. But the big one is the Fungal Zombie. This is summoned with your Fungal Infestation feature as a Spores Druid. And while it is a pretty standard undead, just being able to deal a decent chunk of bludgeoning damage and inflict Gnarring Claw, but it, oh, this is, sorry. This inflicts crawling claw. So when you attack with the fungal zombie, you, they infect the enemy with the zombie mucus. And if the affected entity dies before the infection wears off, they will temporarily rise again as a newborn zombie. And newborn zombies just can uh, kind of act on their own. They deal little bits of extra damage, but can multiply extremely quickly, allowing you to get even more members for your army. And of course, this is one of my favorite kind of zombie designs because it reminds me of The Last of Us, but hey ho. With the Necromancer, I've gone with an Earth Elemental that was stuck at the entrance. I was wondering where it went. Uh, let's walk him back. We have a Soil Clogged... God damn it, you know what? We're just going to talk about him here. <laughs> we have the Soil Clogged Slam, which allows us to punch a foe and deal a ton of bludgeoning damage. We also have the Seismic Strike, allowing us to uh, deal damage in a radius around us, push enemies back, and inflict them with trembling legs, meaning their dexterity and movement speed are reduced. This also has Elemental Warp and a multi-attack as well, and is overall an extremely tanky summon coming in with a ton of HP. And because this guy wasn't actually anywhere... Uh, close to us he he doesn't even have the uh, hp benefits from aid and heroes feast so he can go even higher but of course our we also get an extra mummy with our necromancer but we can also summon two flying ghouls the flying ghouls are going to be able to do a ton of slashing damage and possibly paralyze their targets with their main hand attack and they can also go with devour if you bite a knocked out prone or sleeping target you deal a ton of damage and heal as well these guys can also fly and again because we're a necromancer wizard we get two of these at any given time meaning they're going to be super strong and able to swarm the battlefield Speaking of two summons, I've also got the Mud Methods from Conjure Minor, Element, Minor Elemental. These guys have a Muddy Claw attack, which is going to deal bludgeoning damage. They can f throw mud as a ranged attack and also use Mud Breath to restrain enemies, meaning that the, their movement speed is affected and attack rolls against them have advantage. And they also have a Kamikaze Death Burst, meaning they deal a ton of damage, but they kill themselves in the process, but can also potentially restrain foes. Again, just a couple of extra bodies. You could also go with something like the Ice Methods from Conjumidal Elemental, if you wanted to have kind of like a ranged chromatic orb attack, because they get like Ice Chromatic Orb. And then finally, onto here, we have another Kree Undead Mummy, another Flying Ghoul from Anime Dead, but also the Cambion, allowing us to use a Razor Fire, which is kind of a more powerful version of Scorching Ray. Fiendish Charm, allowing you to charm a humanoid. Uh, basically, it's it's charm person, but I think it's a bit stronger. We also have Draining Kiss. If a foe is charmed, you can deal a ton of psychic damage to them. Yeah, and it has to be done by a fiendish charm, but yeah. And also, they just get a regular weapon attack, but honestly, I would use anything other than that because it's a bit shit. Uh, so yeah, that is the build. Builds. The fucking army. This is obviously going to be an extremely powerful playstyle, but it's going to feel good to play through the whole game. Because even though obviously a lot of the buffs and such that we have here, we don't get until some of the later levels, you'll find that as you slowly level up and get the ability to summon more things as you go, you're going to start off with a pretty solid four-person party already, but then as you get these summon spells and your army begins to grow and expand, the actual power progression and the expansion of your like kind of army is going to feel super fun and super satisfying, as you go throughout the game. So honestly, I would absolutely try this playstyle out if you're looking for something a bit different for your next playthrough. This would be great for dealing with a tactician run if you've not tackled that yet. 
So, I want to begin the combat showcase. Do, 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 do. Oh, can I make a dead out of, the, out of you? No, I think I've reached the limit. Okay. All right, we're going in. Charge, men. They'll never see it coming. Zevlor. Oh, wait, we... Can I just attack them? Yes. Yes, I want to attack. And so it begins. Right. Who's... Yeah, okay, so everyone's our enemy. Right. Ray of... Fuck you. Uh, let's go for Ray of Fuck you. I'm doing a combat showcase live. This is a bit different, but I wanted to give it a try. <laughs> uh, let's go... One, two, and three. Okay. What have we got here for Necromancer? Uh, let's go with... Oh, let's go with the classic. Fireball? We've probably made some enemies. <laughs> Uh, let's dash. Oh, yeah, you have to be careful of doorways. Like, narrow spaces like this, they are your summons are going to have a bit of trouble getting past each other. But as long as you kind of, like, you can set things up ahead of time. I just didn't really choose to because I wanted to get straight into the murder. Let's go fly. Fortunately, we don't have a ranged attack on this character, so we'll just have to kind of keep moving forward. This feels like Fire Emblem. Has anybody played Fire Emblem? I haven't played it in a long time, to be fair, but it just, it just kind of reminded me of it. Let's grab this guy. Let's go. Right, so now we have our Spores Druid. Let's... I'm going to say let's use our Boots of Speed Dash and get in. If the gods are watching me. And then we're going to just hit him with a... Oh, we can... Oh, we don't have Shillelagh because we used our bonus action. Um, what can I do here? That would be fun. Oh, I'm just going to hit him. Bonk. Oh, it's because our... Oh, ignore the fact that I have Counterspell. Uh, that is a mod that I need to fucking disable. I don't know, it's like a side effect of one of my mods that all of my characters get, like, um, that, that ability for some reason. But just ignore it. Alright, we have our Dryad moving next. Let's dash with them. They can't... <laughs> they can't move because they're stuck behind everybody, so we'll just cast a Lelian in their turn. We're going to dash with the mummy. This is going to be a very, very long video, I've just realized. But hopefully, it will work out. Uh, ow. Ow. Damn. Devlor, okay. Uh, let us fly. This is being done on Tactician as well, by the way. Just for the... I always test my builds on Tactician, but just in case people don't know. Mudfling. Oh, a crit with the mudfling. Nice. Now let's dash. And then let's fly over to Zevlor. Zoomed in on that course for some reason. Uh, oh, we also get to do a little... Oh, how, how can I aim at Zevlor here? How can I... I've got to go like, try and get in to aim at him. Oop. Yeah, I didn't think that was going to hit, but I thought I'd try it anyway. And then we can Elemental Warp, I think, to here-ish. Yeah. We should be able to move... Can we, can we hit him? Yeah, we can hit him. Or apparently, no, we can't. Okay. Right now, we are the cleric, so we can... Uh, I'm going to do the mass healing word to kind of show this off. Because look at this. Now, everyone is blessed. Everyone. <laughs> this is cool. Uh, let's see. Is there any like kind of range? Oh, I could do a bow attack, I guess. No, I don't have movement. Uh, I will cut, I guess, hmm, I'm just going to dash. Yeah, there we go. And then we're back to the mummy again, another mummy. Let's try and spread them out so it's, like, easier for our allies to get through. We kind of have to manage that as we go. Nothing will stand in and now we have the general, who is, if I move him kind of in here, again, anyone near him is going to be getting that, like, little bit of a buff. Uh, let's go for a ranged attack on Zephyr, see if we can kind of hit him. Boop. We'll go for an extra attack here. Boop. Perfect. Let's move in. Continue the charge. I mean, you get the idea at this point. I mean, I kind of just... I'll kind of do, like, the uh, end of video stuff as I'm kind of going over it. Um, this is the kind of first of my like i'm kind of doing like a big like recording session oh my god listen to it <laughs> let's attack will hi will attack will 
Let's get the whole Druid Grove on us. Oh. Yeah. Right now, everyone's hostile. Perfect. So, with that, uh, so again, with this build, you're going to just have a ton of fun uh, kind of playing around with it. Uh, you'll be able to do a ton of big damage with your uh, kind of uh, basically just your sheer amount of uh, members of your army. So, you, you, I've already explained it. You're going to have a ton of fun with this one. Uh, I'm kind of, my thoughts are all over the place because I'm trying to play the game and do the YouTube thing at the same time. It's not really working, but you know what? I'm just going to upload this video in its rawest form because I want to. Uh, as I said, as I was going to say earlier, there is a. Um, this is kind of like a first in a big bench of recordings I'm doing in a single day. I'm kind of just pumping out videos a little bit. Uh, but I do. I'm still kind of looking for ideas of other things to kind of try doing. Like, I want to kind of start making new build videos, I guess. Like, not, not build videos, but like, I kind of want to just start making new types of videos that aren't build videos. So I'm still looking for ideas for that kind of for the future. Uh, but so I'm, I'm, I'm open to suggestions. If anybody can think of anything, let me know, I would say. But, um,. I, I'm not too sure yet, but again, there's going to be mostly build videos for a little while now anyway, so it's not a big deal at the moment, but I do kind of just want to get those ideas in kind of as we go. You know what I think I'm going to do? I think I'm going to say goodbye for now, and I'm just going to kind of continue playing in the background without any dialogue. So if you want to click off the video at this point, feel free, because I feel like we've kind of got the gist of it down. So <laughs> thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all next time. Sometimes the only way out is... 